extracorporeal shockwave. I'd like you to understand a little bit about extracorporeal shockwave before you choose to have it. So shockwave is actually um, an energy wave or a radio wave that comes from outside the body. The word extracorporeal shockwave means basically from outside the body. So it's a non-surgical technique. When shockwave started to be used in the mid to late 80s after research with litho uh, lithotripsy was completed, the generators, the equipment uh, that came out were very expensive, two, three hundred thousand dollars for the equipment. So there was very little access to shockwave in the province of Alberta. There was one shockwave generator up in Edmonton and that was it. Um, and so as shockwave equipment prices came down, the accessibility for shockwave uh, was a lot better. So we've had our shockwave generators since about 2007, uh, allowing this, um, this service to be you know, available here in central Alberta. Uh, initially because the cost was, was so much and it was only private, um, privately available, you had to pay out of pocket for that service. So people would do everything else first before trying shockwave. They would try cortical steroid injections, they would try surgery often, uh, and use shockwave, shockwave as a last resort. Now that the prices have come down, it's a little bit more uh, mainstream to try shockwave first and it should be incorporated first in a treatment plan before looking at some of those other interventions uh, because it's non-invasive because there are really really no risks or very few risks other than maybe the shockwave won't work and you'll end up with the condition still so I would add an add in shockwave as soon as we know that a tendon has become a chronic uh, injury or you've uh, got a tendonitis now that's been with you for a few months uh, I would go ahead with it if you're young and you're you know 16 years old we would make sure your physician has given us permission but if you're over 16 years of age and you're healthy then definitely there would be very very few reasons to not go ahead and, and try it right away. So it is just an impact energy uh, it's like a vibration or a little mini jackhammer uh, that we use to kind of treat the tissue. Uh, an area about the size of a nickel um, or a dime, so just a centimeter or so across, uh, is all we, we treat at one, at one time. So we'll go into the tissue, uh, about 500 hits uh, will, will affect that tissue, and then we'll move over to another area that's affected uh, or injured, and then we'll put another um, about five to 600 hits into that tissue. It actually creates a mini, miniature injury at the surface of that tissue, causing some swelling, causing some redness, and it's that response or tissue response, the redness and swelling, that actually brings the little cells into the area. They're called macrophages and phagocytes. And those little cells actually help to clean up the tissue debris and take away any of the injured inflamed tissue. And so we know that when a, a person has an injury, they basically are starting the healing process because of the cellular cascade that happens with an injury. And so when you've had a tendonitis or a, a plantar fasciitis for a very long time, that tissue is kind of forgotten about. Your body isn't aggressively getting it better anymore. It's just sore and it's ineffective. And sometimes a scar tissue, uh, again, it's kind of like a crisscross matrix of, of collagen that isn't effectively aligned, it's not strong, it's not effective. So we need to figure out a way to get the body to absorb that tissue and lay down new effective tissue. And Shockwave has been uh, found to be very, very effective on getting that collagen to change over, be absorbed, and then allowing new collagen to be laid down in its place. So with shockwave again, you actually have an injury that happens from the technique itself. You'll immediately see redness and swelling occur and that's basically the white blood cells that have come rushing into the area to check out what happened and to start to engulf the tissue debris and then it's hauled away through your lymphatic system. And so in essence, it's just kickstarting your own body's mechanism to, to get that body uh, injury better. So before deciding to have shockwave, you want to make sure that you're not on blood thinners. If you are, uh, something like an aspirin or an ibuprofen, you want to discontinue use for one week prior and one week after. If you're um, taking Coumadin or a stronger blood thinning medication for a heart condition, uh, you won't be a candidate for shockwave at all. If you're a diabetic, then you need to use caution um, with shockwave just because uh, with diabetics uh, there will often be a circulatory impairment uh, that can again create a, a worse of an injury that again just takes too long to get better or the, the change to the circulation can be an issue uh, with, uh, with you. If you have a tumor, an undiagnosed tumor or a diagnosed uh, cancerous tumor, 
tumor, you certainly wouldn't have shockwave done in that area or over that tissue at all. If you have a circulation or nerve disorder, something that has been diagnosed that isn't uh, an indication, your doctor would tell you that. Um, and also if you're pregnant, we could do uh, shockwave in tissue on an extremity like a foot or, or hand uh, if you're pregnant, but we certainly would uh, either use caution or we get permission from your physician first. Different tissue that can be treated, effectively treated with shockwave. It's basically any tendonitis, so shoulder tendonitis, an elbow tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, jumper's knee or patellar tendonitis, Achilles tendonitis. Um, if you have a calcific tendonitis where calcium or mineral, mineral is laid down into tendon, uh, especially in the shoulder or knee or, or elbow area. Chronic trigger points, uh, low back pain, uh, where you have a restricted SI joint or facet sprain, that can, can be effectively treated with shockwave as well. So the equipment that we use, first of all, is there's basically an applicator. And with the shockwave applicator, inside of this, there's a cylinder, like I mentioned, that goes back and forth. And that cylinder uh, is sliding back and forth based on electromagnetic driven power source. So basically, the polarity switches from positive to negative inside the, the handheld device, um, causing the cylinder to fly back and forth. Once the cylinder hits the end, basically, um, it, it impacts or comes into contact with the end of the tip. So you can see this is kind of mushroomed out and, and shiny. And so it, this tip would actually kind of get um, screwed right into the end of this. And there are three different tips depending on the tissue that we're working on. Uh, so two and a half centimeter, uh, one and a half centimeter and six millimeter tip sizes. And the therapist would decide based on, uh, based on the injury. So that, um, basically the, the cylinder hits the end of the tip, which causes a little bit of actual metal uh, motion here um, as the tip vibrates and moves in and out. Silicone, go, silicone goes on over the end of the, um, over uh, top of the tip just to reduce heat transfer because the, the metal tip will actually heat up quite a bit and get, and get hot from the vibrating metal. And so that silicone, just like rubber gloves or oven mitts, uh, is basically a bit of a heat barrier. Uh, it also is more comfortable for applying the shockwave. So it basically it's like dropping water onto, um, you know, onto a surface of water. As you drop water, it creates a rippling effect that goes out uh, into the t uh, out into the water body or into the tissue in this case. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and and clean the tissue. So saying it was my thumb, and then we would go ahead with. Uh, some ultrasound gel. The gel just allows the energy to, to be travel or to travel into the tissue a little bit better, uh, and then the application uh, is is you know begun. In terms of the actual shock wave, uh, the therapist would select the appropriate dosage. So we can use different frequencies. Um, so a frequency of two is basically um, two hits or two impacts per second, and five is five impacts per second, more so used with trigger point release. Uh, in tendonitis, we generally use um, a 16 uh, frequency or, or 16 hits per second. So that's basically what it sounds like. So we kind of get into the tissue and we treat an area about the size of a, you know, a centimeter or so across uh, with 500 impacts and then we would move on to new tissue and do the same until we got all the tissue that we needed. What to expect with your shockwave treatment? Some people may experience soreness or, or uh, swelling and redness, just like an injury. And that soreness can last from five to, to 10 days. Some people have very, very little soreness though. And so uh, it isn't a requirement to have soreness from your injury. And uh, what you'll wanna do though, is that you'll allow that tissue response to happen. So you're gonna allow that, that uh, uh, metabolic tissue response to occur. And the next couple hours, uh, don't ice it uh, for, that, for that period of time. And then after that, you can go ahead and apply ice as needed. Again, stay away from the anti-inflammatory medication for at least a week um, after the treatment. In terms of things that you should do, um, you, you can use the area, so if it's shockwave done on a knee, um, as an example, you would probably be fine to go to work and, and uh, carry about your day-to-day -day activities. But I wouldn't want you to go for a run or do jumping sports uh, for the next couple days to allow that tissue to settle down. Further treatments uh, into the area would be done every four to even up to 14 days. 
So you'll allow the tissue response to completely resolve and uh, to allow the best benefit from the, the first treatment not to go ahead and, and treat it a second time and like I say until that soreness is completely dissipated from the first treatment. So everyone's different whether it takes um, a week or, or two uh, to recover and, and to have the treatment done again. If you have any questions or concerns please direct those questions to your therapist or check out at the front desk to make any further appointment bookings.